this section is all about the chain rule. So if you remember back in algebra, it may have been a while, right? Where we talked about composite functions, where we talked about a function within a function, typically students would call it prog. I like this last part because it helps me see an inside function, which is g of x, and the outside function, which is f of g of x. And that's how you did an example like this with a composite function. Given two functions, find f of g of x. Well, you did the inside first, so you plugged in x squared. And then you evaluated f of x, but at x squared. So everywhere you see an x, you plug in an x squared. And hopefully, kind of, sort of, you remember that's how you did composite functions. Okay. Um, I did review it a little bit in the very first video under the review, but all it is is a function within a function. Typically, the inside function, you're doing something first. Whatever you get out of that inside function, you put in the outside function. All right, so how could we actually put these into words and applications to describe composite functions? So if I have calories burned, C, depend upon the number of miles traveled. So that's my function. Miles traveled, um, how many miles I traveled will give me the calories burned. But my number of miles traveled is also a function that depends on time. Therefore, I have a composite function. I have my inside function, which is miles dependent on time. And then I have my outside function, which is my calories dependent on miles. So if I'm looking at derivatives with all of these, then if I look at this function, then it would be the change in calories per change in mile. Because remember we said what goes on top is the y equals or your function. And then what goes on bottom is your independent variable. If I look at this one, I can see that I have the change in miles per change in time. And I'm, I've just made up these numbers here. Therefore, if I want to plug all of this into my composite function, how we could actually figure out the calories burned was by multiplying these two values. Because you can see that miles cancel and you end up with 600 calories per hour. That's important that you're multiplying because that's what you're going to do with derivatives when we work with composite functions. So that's what the chain rule says. The chain rule says take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the inside, and multiply it by the derivative of the outside. Always remember that. Take the derivative of the inside times the derivative of the outside. All right, and so just in other notations, that's what this is saying here, is if I have two functions, um, and I want my f of g of x, my derivative of the inside would be g prime of x. And then my derivative of the outside would be f prime of g of x. And same thing down here is just showing in Leibniz no, no, notation, derivative of inside times derivative of outside. So if I have, for example, y equals in parentheses 2x squared plus 1 and all of that squared. What you always do is you look to find what your inside function. Well, it's pretty easy with this because it's inside the parentheses. And you're going to see a lot of times it's going to be under a square root. It's going to be in the exponent. So this is my inside function. So I found my inside function, u equals 2x squared plus 1. So then my outside function, if I let u equal 2x squared plus 1, then I would replace all this with u and just get u squared. All right, so my inside function, I call u. My outside function then is what I called u squared. Based on that last slide where we said all we do is multiply the two derivatives, we find the two derivatives. So the derivative of u squared, hopefully you've gotten good at this power rule. You bring the 2 down, you subtract 1, so that's 2u. The derivative of 2x squared plus 1, 2 times 2 is 4, subtract 1, 4x. The derivative of a constant, 0. So I took derivatives of both. Now I multiply them. So I multiply the derivatives, 2u 
times 4x equals 8ux. And then finally, I substitute back. I go back up here and I see what u equals. And where I see u, I plug in 2x squared plus 1. So that's what you're going to see I did here. I, I just changed the order of them. So 8xu, put the u at the end. Where I see u, I plug in 2x squared plus 1. So what this is, again, the steps, inside, outside, derivative of inside, derivative of outside, multiply, substitute u back, and then you can multiply this out if you like. Okay, I can distribute the 8x times 2x squared and the 8x times 1, and that gives me my answer. So as you're going to see, all the steps are the same. It's just going through a step at a time. And I'll definitely have some homework videos on these. So I tend to um, not do these this way. <laughs> it's just kind of a, a shortcut of not writing the U equals and all that good stuff. So I leave it up to you to pick which way you want to do. If the way I just showed you, a lot of students like that way because it's step one, find the outside. Step two, find the inside. Step three, take the derivatives of the inside, the outside. Step four, multiply them. Step five, substitute back. What I do is I just kind of look at this as a whole and I take the derivative of the outside. So that would be bringing the two down, subtracting one. So that's my power rule. And I leave the inside alone. That's the big key. I leave that alone. And then I take the derivative of the inside, which is 4x. And now I can multiply all of these together and get the same answer. I'm kind of doing in my head what I'm doing on the other slides. I'm just doing the outside first and not substituting u. That's all I'm doing. Okay. But I find this a little easier um, and quicker, of course, because I'm lazy. And so I, I do the power rule. I bring the two down, subtract one, leave the inside alone then take the derivative of the inside and you still multiply them together. So that didn't change. You might look at this and say, why wouldn't you just FOIL this? So 2x squared plus 1 times 2x squared plus 1. FOIL this out, 4x to the 4th plus 4x squared plus 1. You remember how to FOIL? You better. And then take the derivatives, 4, bring the 4 down, subtract 1, bring the 2 down, subtract 1, derivative of constant 0 and you get the same answer. So then why do we even need, need the chain rule? Well, do you want to do this? Do you want to expand this out a hundred? You want to multiply this a hundred times? I don't think so. And that's why we need the chain rule. All right. So hopefully that convinces you. So again, the chain rule in the four steps. However, before you do the chain rule, you have to realize when do I know to use the chain rule? When you have a composite function. You could see two functions. So if I go back here, I can see two functions. I can see a 2x squared plus 1, and then I can see a function something to the hundredth power. This one back here, I see a 2x squared plus 1, and then I see something to the second power. So you have to be able to recognize that you have a composite function. Then you find the inside function, you find the outside function, you take the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of the outside function, you multiply the derivatives together, and then you substitute back. These steps will never change. Even if you're doing the shortcut, you're just kind of doing these derivatives, steps one and two together. So if I look here and I want to find the derivative, how do I know this is a composite function? Because I see a cubic inside x cubed plus 5, and outside I see a logarithm. That is how automatically I know this is a composite function. It's a cubic inside a log. So I want to find the derivative. I'm going to call my inside function x cubed plus 5, my outside function ln to the u. I'm going to take the derivatives of both. Do you remember the derivative of ln of u was 1 over u? Do you remember that? You remember that? You remember that? You better remember that. And the derivative of x cubed, bring the 3 down, pass it around, subtract 1. The derivative of 5, constant, goes away. What do you do next? You multiply them. 
And then finally, you so I can bring this up top, you substitute you back. So don't forget that substitution, that last step to substitute back. All right, here's another example. Well, I could rewrite this by bringing this whole piece up top. And now I see this, all of this is my inside function raised to the negative one power. And we just actually found on the last example, this derivative. So in other words, this is actually a chain rule within a chain rule within a chain rule, because I see x cubed plus five I see ln of something, and I see something to the negative one power. It's just we actually did this example on the last slide, okay? How do I find the derivative of u to the negative one? I bring negative one down, subtract one, so that's how we get negative two. I multiply these two, and then I substitute back. So where I see u, I substitute everything back in for u, all right? So sometimes you might have multiple chain rules that you have to do and you have to do them in pieces. So if you remember when the last lecture I did logarithms and I said, well, I can't really show you the proof. All I can do is tell you the derivative for ln of x is one over x. That's kind of a lie. This is really a chain rule. If you think about it, it's a linear function x inside an ln. So the chain rule says, take the derivative of the outside, which is one over X, but then you should be also taking the derivative of the inside. It just so happens the inside derivative is one, but technically these are chain rules. And so if you always remember ln of X, the derivative of ln of X is one over X times the derivative of X, ln of anything, one over anything times the derivative of the anything ln of anything, one over the anything times the derivative of the anything. That's how I always say these. What's the derivative of ln of anything? One over x cubed plus five. Then times what's the derivative of x cubed plus five, three x squared, and then I just piece them together. All right, so that's, this is something to practice and you'll hear me say this a lot. The derivative of ln of anything is one over the anything times the derivative of the anything. This is no different than going off to the side and saying u equals x cubed plus five, and then the outside y equals ln of u. That's still doing the same thing. Uh, I said that e to the kt, the derivative was ke to the kt, and I also said the derivative of e to the x was e to the x, not really, so I lied to you. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x times the derivative of x. Again, I see an x, a linear function, inside an exponential. So how do I say this? The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything repeated times the derivative of the anything. It just so happens the derivative of x is one and that's why it works for e to the x. But what if you had e to the 3x? Well, we learned that whole e to the kt, you just bring the 3 down. But the, but the reason why is the derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x times the derivative of 3x. So you're taking the derivative of this top piece up here, and that's how you're getting that 3, where you just kind of memorize that formula, e to the kt, the derivative was k e to the kt. But what if this was more than 3x? What if it was x squared? Then you would actually have e to the x squared times 2x, because you're going to take the derivative of x squared. The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of the anything. Uh, also talk about this derivative, a to the x equals ln of a times a to the x. So we need the chain rule to be able to prove this. So if I kind of go back in time and I remember E's and kind of sort of logarithms that I know E is the same base as LN, LN is base E. So I can rewrite A to the X as E to the LN of A to the X. Okay, so you have to convince yourself this is something that the E's cancel and the A comes down. So this is identical to that. 
and then I use my power rule where I bring the x and multiply it inside, so I have this. So in other words, when I'm taking the derivative of a to the x, I'm really taking the derivative of this piece, and that's what I'm going to show. I just said the derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of the anything. So the derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything, notice I just repeated it, times this derivative. This derivative is ln of a. Why? ln of a is just a number. There's no variable here, so that's like saying 3x. The derivative of 3x is 3, so the derivative of ln of a times x is simply ln of a. And then I just bring that out front, and I say, oh, that e to the ln of a is the same thing as a to the x, so I just substitute that piece as a to the x, and I get my answer. All right, so again, the chain rule is going to take a little bit of practice. We're going to do some videos um, on your homework, but keep practicing them and ask me questions.